Please tell me what the nature of time is in our time world. Once you have entered the timeless world at the moment of your flat line, you will have known the answer naturally. She time. The nature of she time. The starting point of my life is the nature of she time. I refer to time as she time as the feminine principle. This is my invention, so to speak. Since my childhood years, I've been interested in the nature of time. I deal with the nature of she-time in my three works, the Faustev Trilogy, Sursasar, on things called the Giver, the Supreme Being whispers to a human being, and the Open World Manifesto, the New Order Scientific Technological, Qualp Cooperates. The nature of time is the central problem in physics, defining the physical reality, the existence of the human race. All major world religions deal essentially with the nature of time. According to one esoteric text, the celestial age of Aquarius, the next 2000 years, is the age of she time, the she water bearer. When you take pictures of a person from different angles, they all show you is the same person. This is not the case with she time. The pictures taken of she time from the angle of Einstein's relativity theory, from the angle of quantum mechanics, and from the angle of the physics of chaos are different so much so that they all show you it's not the same person. No doubt she time is a mysterious and a subtle lady who does not reveal her secrets easily. But as any other lady, sooner or later, she will fall in love with a man, a physicist, and she will reveal to him completely and thoroughly her secrets. She did fall in love with Einstein, but not completely though. Some of her secrets she did reveal to Einstein, and Einstein did reveal them to us. I do not pretend to know, but it seems to me that physics will give us a complete answer on the nature of time. Again, I do not pretend to know, but it seems to me, once the nature of time has been revealed, the secret of human life, the secret of human immortality, and the secret of the creation itself will be revealed as well. In his autobiography of 2008, V. Alexander Stefan tells us about his creativity, the passion of his life, and about some other unfinished things. The nature of she time, the coquette, has been boggling the best of the minds of the human race since the dawn of time. Albert Einstein harnessed her within the mathematical expressions. Niels Bohr ignored her as if she had not existed. Stefan assures us that he will harness her completely, just wait and see. Here is Stefan's poem on she time. Ah, the chi time, the essence of our existence. I will harness her. Somebody told me that she walks as if flowing, with her hair blown behind, with her eyes deep and glowing. Ah, the chi time, I will harness her. Newton let her flow free, toward the end of the time flow, toward the time sea. Bohr had asked her politely, please get out of my sight. Quantum mechanics has no need for your light. Einstein fell in love with her by chance. He took her for her hands and started to dance. He made her circle around faster and faster, with her face shining bright. 
She felt good as she was traveling with the speed of light. She looked sexy on the time wheel. Who is going to make her stand still? I will. Ah, the tree time. I will harness her. Somebody told me that with men she's a coquette. She giggles when she teases them. She sighs when she pleases them. She says bye-bye with a smile after she has brightened their lives for a while. Ah, the tree time. I will harness her. Somebody told me that in the darkness of the night, when she's out of sight, she's hunting a man of passion, when she spots him, she approaches him from behind. She says, as she taps on his shoulder, For you, I can be younger, or like this, or older. Ah, the tree time. I will harness her. Somebody told me that she's a helper. She helps an old man to cross the street. She helps little girl to hold tight the hand of her mommy. That's how she is, soft and with everything at ease. Ah, the she time, I will harness her. Somebody told me that she adores children. She prays with them hide and seek. When they find her, she kisses them all. Every boy, she kisses on his left hand. Every girl, she kisses on her left cheek. Ah, the she time, I will harness her. Somebody told me that she's passionate in supporting of those that create. Then she destroys them, as if she can care less, making everything pointless. Ah, the she time, I will harness her. Somebody told me that she's ferocious when she spots a rotten heart. Until she destroys it, she will not part. She circles a rotten heart like the python snake. She squeezes it until all is left is the heart's wake. Ah, the she time, I will harness her. To be with her is like being in the wonderland, they say. But the farthest she can take you is her very own bed, or your very own dying day. Ah, the she time, the wild wind of the mountain, the crushing wave of the ocean, as strong as can be. She'll be harnessed and mine, all mine. Just wait and see. The Stefan Hourglass 2001 There is, says Stefan, the beauty in the flow of time, the same way there is the beauty in the flow of a river. The flow is the form and the essence of life and living. She time oversees everything.
the Alexander Stefan in the hug of she time. Late 1950s, up to 2018. O oh, time, says Marilyn Monroe. As a very young woman, Marilyn Monroe wrote a short poem entitled O oh, Time. I've been always impressed by her sensitivity, sensibility, and emotional intelligence. In my Faustov trilogy, I depicted her as a she time who was in deep love with intellectual intelligence of Albert Einstein. In my trilogy, in April 1955, she drives from New York City to Princeton to visit secretly Albert Einstein. As fate would have it, that visit took place during the last seven days of his life. O oh, time, says Marilyn Monroe. Marilyn Monroe has appeared. The group stops walking. In her baby breathy voice, filled with a deep emotional intelligence, she says, Good evening. Gentlemen, my name is Norma Jean. I am coming from May 29, 1962, from Madison Square Garden, where I have just saluted President Kennedy with the happy birthday, Mr. President. I did not like the way Peter Lawford announced me he was joking about my always being late. Then he announced me, Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. Mr. President, the late Marilyn Monroe. Unfortunately, in a short two months I would indeed become the late Marilyn Monroe. I died, accidentally. J.F. Kennedy shows up. Marilyn was sensational. After having had the happy birthday sung by her, I could easily retire from politics. It was a beautiful gift from her for my birthday. Her gift is truly a Zen Buddhist timeless moment that lasts forever. The group has started walking now. President Kennedy joins them. Marilyn, with a deep cleavage, more than easy on the eye, walks along, wiggling her behind. I wrote a poem, O oh Time, Marilyn says. I have asked she time to be kind to me, to ease my restless mind, and to loose my cosmic loneliness, as she is devouring my flesh and blood. She time, the love goddess, comes and goes, leaving the scars in our hearts. She belongs to no one, as I never belonged to anyone, though I was kind to everyone. All we can do is to ask she time, to be kind to us in our lives unkind. After my death, I was ascended into an immortal woman code 9. By the grace of Hermes Trismegistus, Einstein, who is one of the mortal incarnations of Hermes Trismegistus, was my hero, it seemed to me that he had conquered she time. Now, Dr. Falstaff, you are my hero. With Falstaffian immortality, human tears will be wiped out dry. The sorrow in the human minds, the pain in the human hearts, and the loneliness in the human guts will be gone forever. <laughs>